Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at some 3DS emulation on the Citra emulator. Just want to say first off, thanks for subscribing and watching. I much really appreciate all, all you guys commenting, subscribing, and yeah, just liking the video in general. I'm glad I'm making some good Steam content out there, the Steam Deck content out there for you. And I'll continue to do as many videos as I possibly can on the, on the subject until I've bled it dry, as <laughs> I guess you could say. So today we're looking at the 3DS emulator. So this is Citra. Amazing emulator. I've had like zero problems once I've fully set it up. It's worked great and yeah, let's just jump into the settings. So as you can see, we're in Citra now. Didn't even need to install this. Like I keep mentioning, the MU Deck uh, website actually does all the back end stuff for you guys. So they've made it so intuitive that once you download MU Deck and load it up on your on your system, it will just basically talk you through everything and ask you what kind of emulators you're going to be using and how to get them set up and then where to put the ROMs, blah, 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 blah. Another thing it won't do is tell you where to get ROMs, which is something you'll have to find out by yourself due to obviously legal reasons. So once you've got all that set up and like I said, Emu Deck kind of sets up the Citra emulator, but I just wanted to show you what kind of settings I'm running on just so you could maybe just double check yourself in case Emu Deck has done something weird or if you're setting them up manually, fares. So as you can see, three times native resolution. So you're getting a nice, it's just over, that's over 720p resolution. That is, is, it does look extremely sharp in game, I must say. We've got like Pokemon X looking better than the Diamond and Pearl remakes, which is pretty mad. Advanced, I'd say all this is pretty much standard. Don't really need to do much. The only thing you need to take note of is these hotkeys. So what I took note of here is I took a picture of this screen and then when once I did it in controls, I kind of mapped the back paddles to some of these controls to make it way easier to navigate. Because obviously you've got two screens in the 3DS, so you need to be able to navigate between the two screens depending on what you're doing. So what I mapped was an exit, an exit Citra button. So you can just exit the game without having to mess about. Exit full screen, that's a big one. Well, actually, you could just do a full screen and then toggle between it. So what we want to do is to take note of Exit Citra, F for full screen, and S, which is swap screen. That's all I managed to need. I don't really need anything else. So I'll jump back into the front end, and then we'll see what, how games run. Welcome back to the front end, guys. As you can see, once you set them all up in ROM, Steam ROM Manager, and you've loaded them into the front end, you'll have a nice collection of ROMs, depending on what games you've picked. They look very nice and very strange because 3DS just it doesn't look right. It's sat on a Steam uh, machine, but I promise you guys it works awesome. So if you don't like, if you don't mind not having the screen below the screen kind of look like a regular 3DS, you can play some of these games uh, perfectly fine. So I'll just show you straight off the bat. Straight off the bat, no cuts. So we're going to load up Pokemon X, probably one of my favorite Pokemon games, regardless of like the... One of my favourite newer ones, if I was going to pick an old one, it'd be Heart Gold or Soul Silver. And then if we're going to go even older than that, my first Pokemon game was Pokemon Fire Red. So I guess you could take it from there. It is an awesome... I mean, Fire Red's a legendary title in itself, but Pokemon X is, is awesome for a newer title. So as you can see, you don't start in full screen, but this is where our button maps come in. So if we just press the Steam button, go across here and controller settings... And then you just scroll down, enable back buttons. All you want to do is, I mean, it's up to you which ones you map, but I've got a full screen key is mapped to the back right paddle. You've got the S key, which is mapped, which is the second screen, which is mapped to the bottom left panel. The Y button is not relevant. I didn't really need to map that to anything. And the slash key was mapped to exit Citra, but for some reason, Citra isn't a fan of like keeping them. I tried to change the, the keyboard command but it didn't save it so so we're in pokemon x and you guys will have a second screen at the minute um down in the bottom right and it's tiny and it really annoyed me and i was wondering there must be a better way to do a second screen here so if you just click on the settings button in the top left and there should be a single screen layout section if you change that to single screen it'll just basically make your main screen full screen on this on this on the system so that looks way better in my opinion. If you want to have a second screen down there, you're going to have to mess about with the settings a bit more. This is just the, my preferred way to play. So all you want to do is with our mapped buttons, press the right bumper or the right back paddle even, and that makes us full screen. And we're now in full screen. 
So as you can see, if I just load into my game, haven't played a lot of it so far, as you know, I've got a lot of games to play and not a lot of time. <laughs> That's life. So as you can see, it looks insanely good, sharp. I was like, I was running this, I was like, holy shit, this looks as good, if not better than the, the shoddy Diamond and Pearl remakes that we got. Because obviously that was in like that chibi style. This has its own unique style, but yeah, I don't know. I was like, damn, this looks awesome. And you'd be happy to know that this runs at a mad TDP. If I just go into the, get, give us a little display of the graphics and stuff, the chart. You're looking at like 8.7 watt, which is extremely low because two, two of that wattage is pretty much the system using the power. So you're looking at a mad battery life for 3DS and this goes for most 3DS games. As you can see, I'm limiting it to four watt here. So if we like limit it to six, I know we don't have to limit, but I just like to limit because for my peace of mind, the system isn't using more than it needs to. You guys can do whatever you want. So as you can see, we press the back bumper, it basically takes us into not full screen. And if we press the back left bumper, it swaps to our second screen. So unless you need both screens on at the same time, I just find this a really nice way of just managing the screens. So say for instance, I want to save on Pokemon. You just press the Y button and then I'd swap to second screen. Just go down, click save and save the game. I mean, it's as straightforward as that. And then once we're back in, we go straight back into the, the top screen. So I'll just play some gameplay as usual. Speak to some people. I mean, it's pretty mad to be fair, like the capabilities of this device now that I've got so many emulators set up on my system. I can hop from like PS2 to GameCube to Wii U to Switch to, you know, like the possibilities is pretty endless. So I do have a Pokemon now, so we can try out a Pokemon battle. What I will say is when you first start a few Pokemon battles, there is a slight bit of stutter. I'm guessing that's because it's caching the like backgrounds and stuff for the fights, but it's really very minimalist and it doesn't it doesn't really do a lot. Once you're in once you're in the battle, it should be fine. With Pokemon, obviously you're using the second screen to fight. Forgot to mention you can also use the touchscreen because it is technically a touchscreen, right? So I guess it's gonna get a little bit annoying if you're swapping between when you're fighting in game, but you're not always like going to be jumping in and out quickly. For example, if I use Bubble and then I'm going to go back to the main screen, and I'm going to use Bubble. You know, the move takes time to do and then obviously Pidgey's going to do a move on me. And if you're just going to spam the same move, you technically don't even need to go to the main screen. You can just spam your B button and then it'll use the same, the same move. So for me, I really don't see the point of having a little screen there because you're cutting a lot of the screen real estate off by having the small the second screen. I much prefer just utilising the whole screen for the deck. And yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm just like crazy impressed with the capabilities of, of the emulation on this device. Especially with how easy it is to set up. Emu deck is like one of the easiest ways I've ever set up emulators on device before. So major props to the Emu deck guys. Like I said, like, depending on what Pokemon comes out, a little bit of stutter to load in that kind of Pokemon. It's a little bit weird, but it's only for like a mini millisecond. And if I remember rightly, Pokemon X used to lag in on a regular 3DS anyway. So, I mean, it's not any worse than it's having a little stutter during mid-battle on the regular 3DS. So we're not actually in battle now. I'm pretty sure we're just watching the AI teach us how to capture Pokemon. Classic Pokemon tutorial stuff. But yeah, I have no doubt that like, you'd be able to completely finish Pokemon on this, no problem. As you can see, I'm only on 34%, but I'm getting an hour and 42 minutes of battery life here. So I think you probably get more battery life on here than playing it on a regular 3DS. 
one of the main problems is you won't be getting like the full 3D effect, but a lot, I know a lot of people aren't really fussed about that, and most games now don't even utilize that 3D effect that much anyway, so it's not really a deal breaker. Not for the change up in resolution, like it is a lot sharper. So if we go down to bubble, like this, the switching of screens is seamless anyway, so like I say, if you're holding the device and you've got your finger on the back paddle, you can just quickly switch between it. It's pretty straightforward. So I think that's enough for Pokemon shown. We'll move into something like Zelda and yeah, we'll just see how that goes. Just a quick one. I forgot to mention when we want to quit a game. Sadly, Citra has a bit of issue with you just going straight to home and then exit game. It wants you to actually exit the application itself. So we can map a button to quit straight away. But like I said, like I said before, the control was weird, being weird with me, and I wasn't able to change the keyboard command to a different button, so... For the sake of now, I just go to click that back button to go full screen, literally just come down here and click exit, and it will just quit the game. Easy as that. So, we're back in Zelda. Your game will start off not in full screen, so we literally just put it in full screen. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a setting which enables you to just keep start in full screen anyway, but... It really doesn't take that much effort to just press the back button. So, as you can see, flicking between as usual. The only annoying thing I will say is you have to map the back paddles for every 3DS game. You can't just manually add them for every game. You have to you have to go back and add them to each section, of, like each game you play. So, it takes like two seconds. It's not really that much of a hassle, but if you've got a lot of 3DS games, it might get quite kind of annoying, but worth it in the end once you get it all set up. So I'll just load into Link's Awakening, <laughs> Ocarina of Time. And as you can see, we're in game. Using less battery life than uh, Pokemon was, unless that jumps up. It doesn't look like it's going to, so... Like I said, the 3DS is mad for it utilizing like so like so little tdp you can have zero fan noise and you can get a mad amount of battery life as well which is just awesome so if you're a fan of 3ds games the steam deck is such a solid device to have as you can see i pretty much just started ocarina of time I, I do like ocarina of time but every time i seem to play it i just get frustrated with like the fact that every time you load in it starts you out in the in your house so like, I don't know why, but unless you're in like a dungeon, I guess. Every time I loaded in, I had to like backtrack to where I was. And if I hadn't played it in a few months, I just kind of forgot where I was supposed to be. And it's not a handholded game whatsoever. Like you're expected to like explore and know exactly where you're going. Which is, I can, I can appreciate it. It's, a, it's that kind of game. But yeah, like, like I say, when I picked up after a couple of months of not playing it, I was kind of lost and I was like, where the hell am I going? So I haven't actually finished this game, which is kind of like mad to say, because it's such an iconic Zelda game, right? So we do need to go see the Great Deku Tree, but apparently we need a sword and shield first. And I'm pretty sure in order to get a sword and shield, we have to buy them. Just keep, let's just go into a few houses and see what happens because the loading time is pretty fast. And just to flip between the screens, pretty simple. I know some people like prefer having the, the second screen in the bottom corner, but like I say, that's all up to you. It's just my preferred way of playing. I have to say, my, probably my favourite Zelda game is Breath of the Wild is the one I put most time into, but A Link Between Worlds is pretty awesome too. That one's on the 3DS, and I do plan on showing that one at some point. But, yeah, Ocarina of Time has always been one that people tell me to play, so I probably should get on with it at some point. So he's selling the shield, but we don't have enough rupees in order to afford it, so... It looks like we're going to have to farm some rupees. Annoyingly, you've got to deal with a camera as well, because in, obviously, the 3DS only had, like, one 
unless you're counting the C stick, which was not really a, a secondary analog stick, really. It wasn't as good as the main stick, but it, it was like kind of like a little nub that didn't really move, but you kind of like used your force on it. It was decent, but a lot of the older games didn't map that to any ca um, camera controls, so you kind of suck with just having to deal with a regular camera that follows you around, which is a little bit frustrating. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get some rupees. Some blue ones, maybe? I think the last part I remember getting to this on the on the 3DS version was the part where you go into that guy's mouth. It's like that big creature. You have to go through its mouth. It's like a mini dungeon inside his mouth. You have to like, feed it some fish or something, and then you go through its mouth, and you have to go rescue somebody. It's about as far as I got, and that's not even like with Adult Link, that's just with Kid Link. I know that you transition to Adult Link at some point. It's funny though, because uh, Ganondorf is probably my favourite villain from Zelda, so... Yeah, I've got quite a backlog of Zelda games to play, including like Wind Waker. All them ones. Can't pick that up. Someone needs to give me a sword. Fair enough, but you get the point. Zelda, Ocarina of Time, works great. Welcome back. We've got one of my favorite 3DS games on now, Fire Emblem Awakening. I kind of want to flex this because it's probably one of the most collectible items in my possession currently. It is my 3DS. I'm kind of mad proud of this because I picked it up at a pretty decent price and it's kind of skyrocketed because the 3DS is on a, on a bit of a rampage at the minute. It's my Fire Emblem's it's quite hard to pick up the pattern on the back or on the front of it, but it's my Fire Emblem's Fate 3DS XL. I love it. As you can see, you got like it's, it's pretty subtle, but it is very clean. Um, yeah, just a, just flexing because I mean this is a gaming channel, all right? So any chance I get to show off some of my collection, I'll I'll be sure to do it. But yeah, I love Fire Emblem. I do love Three Houses as well. That's a solid entry. Tries to change it up a bit with the school system, and I I can appreciate that. With the three different playthroughs you can do as well. Fire Emblem Awakening is, is the first Fire Emblem I actually played though back on the on the 3DS quite a while ago now, but I know there's been Fire Emblem since like the since the mega old Nintendo consoles, so fair enough. I'll just skip through the cutscenes, there's no point of us watching cutscenes, they're all in game anyway. Out out FMV style. So the only thing I will say is the character pictures are not used to be blown up this this in this big of a, a size, so they kind of look a little bit blurry. Whereas as contrast to like the in-game stuff, which looks really sharp. Weird haloing effect on some of the characters though. I will say I noticed that might just be a case of a single box that you have to check in Citra. I'll have to have a look. It's nothing really crazily bugging me at the minute, so I haven't really bothered to check it out yet. You can swap between the bottom screen and the top screen so easily. I just want to keep showing you how simple it is to just swap between. And there's a lot of talking in this game. But once you get to the actual turn-based battle combat, it's so worth playing. I remember playing this for the first time. I hadn't really ever played anything like it before. And just, I think I accidentally chose permadeath mode because everyone was like, oh, you've got to play it in permadeath mode. You feel so attached to your characters. And I got like five or six hours through the game and oh my God, there was like one fight and most of my characters were killed in that one fight and it kind of fucked me over for the whole, the rest of the game. And I just lost like beloved characters. I'd, I'd spent so much time upgrading and stuff. out. It was kind of scared me a bit and it put me off Fire Emblem for a bit, so... I think I did another playthrough where I just played it non-permadeath to get me back into it. I'm always looking at doing another permadeath game, gameplay of it, but I don't know if I want to because I spent that much time loading up my units and stuff and every move like matters in permadeath because you can kill off your characters so easily. So it's like, 
I'm like double thinking, triple thinking my move set, thinking is this guy gonna come up and attack me, or is this if this guy can fly over, can he still hit me? It's like it's a stressful game in permadeath mode for sure. As you can see, a little bit of stutter when we're fighting, but that should only happen one time. I think it's just loading in like the animation and stuff like that. I don't know what it is doing really, but it doesn't seem to do it the next time I ever fight, so we'll just have a look now. A little bit of stutter there. We'll just double check and make sure. If it does it every time, then we might have to look at, at why it does that, but it isn't massively annoying for me. Nothing really goes on on the bottom screen in this game. It's more of just like to checking stats and that, so it's not really that important to have. Love a good uh, strategy game though. Maybe shouldn't have put her in harm's way. See, this is me not thinking. If this was permanent merge, she could potentially kill get killed here. Yeah. Let's get Frederick on that one. There we go. It's funny because I, seeing as I own the, the 3DS XL Fates Edition, I haven't actually played Fates, the game. Just Awakening on the 3DS. So, uh, is that one worth playing? I know there's two versions of it. I know there's Conquest and Birthright. I know they're two separate campaigns, but which one would you recommend playing first? Which one's like uh, got a better story, I guess? I mean, I've done the playthrough of each house in um, fighting. Three houses, so I'm down for playing different storylines. But yeah, if you just want to let me know which one you'd recommend starting first, I'll have a look. But yeah, as you can see, plays like a dream. A slight bit of uh, stutter in the actual combat, but once it's loaded and you, everyone's had an attack, it seems to have just like smoothened out a bit. So I wouldn't massively worry about that. And it's only pulling 8 watt as well, so... Yeah, if you guys love 3DS, you are going to love playing 3DS on the Steam Deck. I was actually really shocked at how how good it was, like, efficiency-wise on the, on the TDP. But yeah, guys, that's some gameplay of uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. We'll move into the last game of the day. Welcome back. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't show off a potential way of sneaking Snake Eater into a video. I'm sure I've drilled it into you enough now. I love Metal Gear Solid, so I'm always down to playing another version of it. As you can see, this is the 3DS edition. A pretty solid edition, considering it's on the 3DS and has the limited uh, hardware of the 3DS to put in such a packed game. So there's a few quirks with this one. Basically, there was an option of using a Circle Pad Pro, which is like an accessory device they brought out, I don't know, around the same time as this game. And what it was was like an attachment to the side and it let you manipulate the mouse, uh, the camera, with like another analog stick. So what I've managed to do is find, oh, fuck's sake, there would be like guys right on me on this serve. So what I've managed to do is enable Circle Pad Pro and that allows you to use the analog stick. Just let me allow it to use as much TDP as it wants just while I'm discussing this. This one does use more TDP than the others. But yeah, like I say, what I've managed to do is enable CirclePod Pro. And it isn't as easy as it seems. You don't just go into the settings and enable it. You have to like move a save file into your Citrus save file of Metal Gear Solid 3. And that save file has the CirclePod Pro enabled. It's really complicated. It's more complicated than it needs to be. Basically, you take a save file of, at the start of the game and just drop it into your Metal Gear Solid 3 folder within Citra, and that save file has the Circle Pad Pro enabled, and then it allows you to use it in-game. And the final result is you get to play Metal Gear Solid 3 at three times native with, like, the Circle Pad Pro, which is technically your second analog stick, so it's a really cool addition to the. Please don't see me. Fuck. The only thing is, it's locked at um, normal. 
So, I mean, normal's pretty standard for playing Snake Eater. I wouldn't really worry about that. But you've got to have your wits about you because it isn't easy, easy. So I don't actually have a gun at the minute, but you can... It's a little bit awkward. you basically got to hold your finger down on it. Or no, even like use the D-pad, select a weapon, and then to end up using the weapon, it's just the right bumper. Uh, like I said, I don't have a gun, so I can't fully test out the gun ability. But you've just got to get used to the weird control scheme that this game has set up. So you can aim down sights with the left, left bumper and then attack with the right bumper. Like I say, it's a bit awkward me using a knife and this guy's got a gun. <laughs> I might try and grab him. If he stops running away from me. This is one of the only 3DS ports which allows you to move whilst crouched too. Apologies, I'm absolutely butchering this gameplay, but yeah, look. Why can't they have brought that into the HD collection? The ability to crouch and move is such a big thing in Snake Eater that it kind of annoys me why that it isn't a thing in the other versions except just the 3DS version. Kind of makes me want to just solely play it on the 3DS. That and the fact that you get a mad battery life because you're only running it at 9 watt as well. Dude, leave me alone, I'm doing a video here. <laughs> so the only problem I find with this game is all it run it looks like it runs good, but because the hardware is so limited, it kind of locks itself at a really weird frame rate. If I go out of full screen, you can see that the game's running at pretty much 100 percent speed, but it's capped at 20. And it just baffles me. It, well, it doesn't really baffle me because the 3DS is not exactly the most high-tech piece of hardware. But the game is literally locked to 20 FPS. <laughs> so you're you're having to play the game at 20 FPS instead of like 30 or 60 in the HD collection. So it's a little bit... Like, it's not exactly smooth, to say the least. It definitely feels a lower frame rate than the other games, but... The trade-off being you can crouch walk and it runs at a lower wattage is it's kind of worth it. I mean, there's, there's quite a few ways you can play Snake Eater now. Just sadly, there isn't like an actual PC port like you can play. But yeah, like I said, it might look a bit laggy, but it's actually running at 100% speed. It's just 100% speed on Snake Eater is literally 20 FPS. So sorry, bro. I'll see you in the uh, the Sorrows boss fight in a bit later. Which makes me wonder, if I lock this refresh rate down at 40, and then cut it down to 20, does that make the game run a lot smoother? It's just kind of like, crossed my mind. If this is a 20 FPS game, that might help the game run smoother. I don't think it does. You've got like a, a pretty shitty like frame time graph there, so you're getting little mini stutters with that. But I just thought I'd show you guys, that's a possibility if you wanted to try that. But... Yeah, we'll just turn that off. And that's switching between the... The only thing is you can't see your snake's health unless you switch onto this bottom screen. So you might have to slip flip through the screens quite, quite often on this one. But yeah. That's Snake Eater 3D, guys. Had to change nothing on the Citra emulator. It's just the exact same settings. Only running at 8.8 .8 watt, which is super cool. Playable, especially when I actually get a gun. And the fact that you can actually crouch walk in this makes the game a lot easier. Because in regular games, you could only like slow walk and, well, prone walk even. Prone crawl even. It's not even walking, is it? It's prone crawling. But yeah. That's some Citra gameplay. I've got some more Citra stuff coming out tomorrow with some more variety of games like. Uh, Robo bot from Kirby's games and some Mario Kart, you know, just a few different titles. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you guys soon.